Okay, so now we have to try putting in some names for these. So let's try that. Not sure about which one. No. <laughs> What's the part of it that's confusing well, to you? I'm, I'm guessing it's the two methyl pentane, but because it's just the one methyl. Mm -hmm. So what's the confusing part? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Well, that, that's right. I'm insecure. <laughs> so the parent chain here is pentane. There's a methyl substituent, and it's on the number two carbon. So that would be two methyl pentane. Maybe you're a little. Uh, uh, Worried that this almost looks like it might be. This could also be the parent, uh, the parent chain here. You could have started the numbering up here, but that would still give you the same compound. Then we've just named this as the substituent. four carbons, uh, let's see, and we have two methyl substituents, you call this dimethyl. What's the location of this methyl group? Two. And what's the location of this methyl group? Oh, I missed the two. Right. Okay, so it's two comma two. So the problem with the way you wrote it is that the, the reader would only know where one of the methyl groups was, but they wouldn't know where the other methyl group was. After all, it's perfectly possible that the other methyl group could be on the number three. Right? If you only say 2-dimethylbutane, then we don't know whether the other methyl group is on the number 3 or on the number 2. The, this is a tempting mistake to make because you kind of, people feel like they've taken care of the fact that there's two of them when they put in the dye. Right. But you haven't taken care of it unless you put in the two numbers here as well. Okay, but that was the only mistake. Otherwise, you got all these names well, so that's good. So notice that these are all isomers of hexane. So the isomers of hexane don't have to be named hexane. In fact, most of them don't have hexane in the name. They're called pentane or butane, but they're still isomers of hexane because they have the same total number of atoms. Okay, so I think we've had some practice now with the systematic technique for drawing all the structural isomers, starting by drawing the longest chain and then systematically asking where you can put in the extra carbons. You don't have to do this with bond line notation, but I think it's pretty tedious without the bond line notation because you have to draw in all the hydrogens each time. So at first, bond line notation seems like a pain, but it actually um, can actually streamline your thinking and your work. It's easier to see whether two compounds are the same or different, for example, with the bottom line notation. Yeah, my friend on the test, she wrote it out and she forgot all her hydrogens on every problem. Ah, uh, yeah. Remember, you're only allowed to leave off the hydrogens if you use bond line notation. If you're putting in carbons, 
If you're putting in little c's, then you've got to put in the hydrogens. That's the convention. That's a good thing to mention. All right? Uh, Do you know that I understand this? This makes more sense. Yeah. I actually really like the way you showed us isomers because even like my book was kind of hard to understand. So I, I think I'll do better on isomers. Good. <laughs> good. Uh, Uh, let's try naming this compound. Okay, I just wanted to go over this um, because there's a trap here that most students fall for. Most people number the parent chain like this. That is, they don't realize that the longest chain involves these carbons down here. So I just wanted to point out that's a, a favorite trap on tests. Don't assume that the longest chain is all horizontal. You've got to try all the different permutations. That's a common trap. So it's good that you didn't fall into that trap. So this would be 4-ethylheptane. Good. 